Hi, my name is Sangman Park and I teach economics at a German university of applied sciences. In this video series, I would like to show you a concept for creating one-take teaching videos, that is, videos without the need for editing and post-production. The first video was about my concept, the second video was about hardware, and in this third video I will talk in detail about software. In this third part of the series I will show you um, the basic software setup for recording one-take teaching videos. As I said previously, preparing your teaching videos to be recorded in OBS is a bit like setting a stage for a perf performance. Let me preface that although there is a multi-platform version of OBS, I am personally using the Windows version, so everything I say may or may not be 100% applicable to the multi-platform version. With that out of the way, this is how we will proceed in this tutorial. First, I will talk about where to get OBS and the installation process. Second, I will take you through all the settings that might be relevant for you. Thirdly, I will show you how to prepare a very basic scene to record a teaching video. Finally, some words about recording and everything that comes afterwards. All right, let's get into it. First part, installation. OBS is an open source software. I would recommend getting it directly from the developers page, which is obsproject.com. Just open your browser, go to obsproject.com, click on the Windows version, and you're good to go. Um, when you're done installing, start OBS, and um, the first window will look like this. Um, let's go over all the settings, please. Um, when you open the settings, don't be scared of um, the 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 of of all the different settings. I know there will be a lot of different settings with um, strange names. Most of them you can le simply leave untouched. It just means that OBS gives you a lot of room for adjusting your video settings. If you are the kind of person who needs to know what each individual setting really means, please head over back to the OBS page. Click on help and there you will find an explanation of basically everything you could possibly tweak within OBS. All right, this is how OBS looks when you start it up. In the top left, you can access the settings. Just click there and there, and then you will um, access the detailed settings. We will go through all the different tabs. The first tab here is general. Um, well, language you can set basically to everything you like. Personally, I like to keep it at English, not because I'm some elitist idiot, but because most people discussing OBS and discussion forums communicate in English. Among the other things, the only other interesting setting is notification area icon. Um, if you check this option, there will be an OBS icon in your taskbar, which will display a red dot when you are recording, which is really um, a nice way of knowing whether you are actually recording or not. Moving on to the next tab, encoding. Here there's nothing that you really need to change. If you want to change these settings, please make sure to check out the appropriate guides in the OBS forms. The next tab is broadcast settings. Here the first setting is mode, which you have to set, uh, which you have to set to file output only. Um, the reason behind this is that OBS can also live stream to um, a, a number of live streaming clients, but um, here in this context, we're interested in recording teaching videos. And the next thing, file path, is um, also an important setting because um, here you can determine where your um, recordings will be saved to and make sure to also include the uh, name stub for your file there. Mine is called OBS, name it whatever you like. Um, that's about it for our broadcast settings. The next tab is video. Here, it's all about video resolution. My standard setting is to record a 1080p video that is um, with a resolution of um, 1920 by 1080, which is the standard HD resolution. This should suffice for any standard teaching video, uh, and these settings will result in a 1080p video with 30 frames per second. Um, if your laptop is really powerful, you can probably turn FPS to 60, which will result in fantastically smooth animations if you are having any animations. Also, arrow should always be disabled um, because those fancy Windows effects can mess up your video if you um, leave them enabled. 
The next tab is audio. The setting for desktop audio devices is only relevant if your video includes audio other than your microphone. For example, if something you are showing includes sound effects and you want um, those included in your video. Um, if you need this kind of audio in your video, choose from this list the regular speaker you would regularly uh, you would usually use for listening to audio. The next option is microphone auxiliary audio device. As you might have guessed, this is where you choose your microphone. Even in the case that you have only one external microphone attached, this list can have multiple microphones, including the one built into your laptop, the microphone built into an attached webcam, and so on and so on. Make sure that you choose the right microphone. <coughs> the next tab is hotkeys. Hotkeys are very useful for you to be able to start and stop start and stop your video rec um, recording by just pushing a single key on your keyboard instead of switching to your OBS window and clicking the record button. In my experience, the numbers on your numpad are really useful for this because PowerPoint does not use them. As you can see, I have defined uh, number one on the numpad um, as my hotkey to start and to stop recording. The next tab is advanced which, as you can guess, includes loads of advanced options you don't really have to touch for a basic video. All right, now you should be able, um, now you should all be all set to prepare your scene for a ve very basic teaching video. Close the settings, save if it asks you to save the settings. The big part in the middle will show you the preview once you activate the preview. In the bottom left, you have um, the list of all the scenes. Uh, you have defined, this is mine, and um, if we stick to the stage analogy, imagine a revolving stage which you can turn in order to switch a scene. This is basically that. For now, we will only work with one scene, the one we will be preparing in a moment. To, write, to the right of that, you have a list of all the sources um, you are using within a scene. Think of this as all the props you are using to make your stage look pretty. In the bottom right section, you have audio recording levels um, and various buttons. In order to begin designing your first scene, um, right click in the list of scenes and then choose add scene and then go on. Give your scene a meaningful name like my first scene. And now as you can see, um, this is a fresh new scene without any sources, which you can see by this empty list. And in order to add sources to your scene, right click into the list of uh, sources, hover your mouse over add, and you will see a list of all the things you can add to your scene. There is a lot of different things. For now, let us simply stick to window capture. If you choose this, OBS will ask you to name the source. Let's name this PowerPoint as I will be recording a PowerPoint video, um, a PowerPoint window. And after confirming, a window will pop up where you can set the details of your source. The drop down list next to window will give you a list of all the application windows you have open at the moment. And at this point, you should open up the PowerPoint or whatever it is you are showing and set it to full screen. For PowerPoint, that is simply done by pressing F5. Now you should be able to select from your Windows list one that is called PowerPoint Presentation. If it is not there, simply click Refresh to refresh the list. Select um, the appropriate window and let's move on to the um, other options. Among the next three options, capture mouse cursor is the only one really interesting to you. If you check this option, your mouse cursor will be visible whenever you move it across the window that is being captured. Depending on the context, you might want this or not. The next potentially re relevant option is sub-region. Um, for some contexts, you might prefer to show only a sub-region of the window you to be captured. For instance, you might be showing some Flash application in a browser and you want to fade out everything around it. If you need this, just activate the option um, here by clicking select region you are, and by clicking select region, then you are able to choose the region which you require. A grayish 
um, transparent box will appear on top of the last window you were in before OBS. And you can adjust this box to adjust in size by dragging the edges to perfectly select your subregion. For this tutorial, we will um, not be using a subregion. We will ca capture the entirety of the window, so no subregion is required. Click OK, and you are back to the main window. Click Preview Stream uh, in the bottom right to see a preview. Now, if you are using just, moni just one monitor and your OBS window is maximized, you are probably seeing something like this, a kind of, kind of an infinite reflection of your OBS window instead of just the PowerPoint presentation. The reason for this is that in the spot where the PowerPoint presentation is supposed to be, there is just the OBS window. Um, so it's recording itself, recording itself, recording itself, recording itself, and so on. Um, if you are using multiple monitors, just move your OBS window to another monitor. Otherwise, there is not really a way to see the full preview because your OBS window is always in the way. What you can do um, to make sure your PowerPoint is being recorded, you can just make your OBS window a bit smaller um, to see the PowerPoint in the background. Hopefully, your PowerPoint presentation is there in the background. Um, and before you can actually begin recording, I would uh, I, I would recommend making sure that you double check your audio settings. If your mic is activated, the microphone should be red, and at least some of the bars should be filled red too, that, um, which is the recording um, level. After recording a short sample uh, and you find that your voice is too loud, the quickest way to adjust your mic volume is by adjusting these bars. At this point, um, you should be ready to record your first sample video. Um, stop your preview by clicking on that button here. And if you have only one monitor to work with, make sure you have a hotkey defined to start and stop your recording. In the one monitor case, you can then um, minimize or you should minimize OBS uh, to make sure only your presentation is recorded. Press your hotkey and start talking. In the multiple monitor case, make sure OBS is out of the way, press your hotkey, or click the start recording button, or uh, right click the uh, taskbar icon and select start streaming, which, which is all basically the same, uh, the same thing. Um, and, but instead of recording the whole video, stop your, stop your recording after a few seconds, go to your output folder and listen to that video. This is the one step that I do for every video without exception. After all, you want your recording to be done in one take, and that includes having um, acceptable audio levels. And also, I would highly recommend using headphones to check the audio quality of your recording. That will make it much easier to access um, to, as to assess audio levels. If the audio and video are to your liking, you are ready to start your actual recording. After you're done recording, just uh, go to your output folder and um, well, check out your video, rename it, and so on and so on. That is basically it. With this tutorial, you should be able to produce a very basic teaching video. In future videos, I will show you how to create fancy designs for your videos or use multiple scenes within the same video. Like this video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.